In this tutorial, we will be learning new techniques to create the vectors you can see on screen at the moment. We will be using tools to create vectors, and then we're going to be offsetting them. We will be using the really useful snapping options which are available to us, alongside what we like to call construction vectors. Then we will be concentrating on using the text tools to add text and edit the curve and spacing. So let's begin by opening a new copy of the software and we'll start by creating a new file and for this we want to specify a width of 12 inches and a height of 5 inches we want to specify the Z0 um, off the top of the block and we want to specify a thickness of half an inch for this we want the XY data position in the lower left hand corner this is represented by the red square in the 2D view we also want to work in inches. Once we're happy with that, we can just press OK to accept those changes. So the first thing we are going to draw is the arc which represents the top of our nameplate. So to do this, we're going to select the Draw an Arc tool, which is found under Create Vectors. So just click that. There are two ways that we can create an arc. We can use the through three points, which is we specify a start, an end point, and then we can draw the arc depending on how high we lift the mouse and then when we, if we're happy with that we can then just click to make our third point or we can, if we just undo that, we can do the centre start and end which is you specify the centre of a circle you then go out by the radius and then you click and then you then can then go ahead and draw how much of the arc that you want you can do this for up to 180 degrees but for this we want to use the first option which is th through three points so I'm just going to start by doing the start end point and roughly just putting that there because now what we're going to do is we're going to edit these with the values that we know so we know that we want to have the starting x point at 1 and the y 3.5 I also know that I want the end point to be x11 and again y 3.5 now we can use obviously a mixture of these values it depends on what data that we do have but one thing I do know is I don't know what the radius of this arc is but what I do know is I do know the height of the arc that I want so I want the height of the arc to be three quarters of an inch so if I just click apply that will then create our arc with the values that I've given so once we've done that we can click close the next thing we're going to want to do is create our bottom arc for our nameplate. So to do that, I'm going to offset our arc that we've just created by 3 inches. So while it's still selected, come to Offset Selected Vectors. And we want to specify the distance of 3 inches. Now before we press Offset, we need to work out whether we need to offset this outwards, inwards, left, right. The way we do that is outwards and inwards only works for closed vectors. So that's like shapes like squares, rectangles or any other shape that you may have created that's a closed vector. This is what we call an open vector as it's just a line. So the way we uh, work this out is that we first of all we find the start point. Now this is represented by the uh, the black little square that, that's on the end of the line here. This represents the start point. Now what you've got to do is you've got to imagine that you're stood on the start point and you're looking towards the end point which is going to be down here. Now you need to work out whether you want to offset it to the right or to the left. Now in this case we want to offset our arc to the right by three inches. So at the moment it's on the, the right option. So what we'll do now is we'll just press the offset button and then close when we've done that. Now we have both our arcs, what we want to do next is to join the top arc with the bottom arc. Uh, we could do this with the pylon tool and snap from this node to this node and this node to that node and then use the join open vectors tool. However, what we're going to do is we're going to first select our top arc, then we're going to shift and then select our bottom arc. We're going to use this tool down here which says join and close vectors with a straight line. So if we just press that once that will create the first line and if we press it again it will create our fully closed vector which is what we want. 
Next, we're going to offset our vector inwards to create our border shape. So with the vector still selected, we're going to come to Offset Selected Vectors. Now, as we've got uh, a closed vector, we know that we want to offset this one inwards. And we want to offset it inwards by 3 8 of an inch. So if you don't know the decimal value, we can simply do that by pressing 3 divided by 8 and then hitting the equals key on the keyboard. That will give us our decimal value. And we can then click the offset button and then click close. The next thing we're going to want to do as we are going to be next doing our drill holes but for that we're going to be using some of the mirror operations. So to, for that we want to make sure that our part at the moment is perfectly aligned on all sides to the center. So to do that simply shift and select the inner vector that we've just created and then come to transform objects and select the align selected objects tool and when we're in here come to this one which is going to center in all directions the parts that we've got selected so just click that you will notice that it will just come up slightly and then when we've done that click close so the next thing we're going to be creating is our drill holes for our nameplate in each of the corners here what I want to do though is I want to create our drill holes to be exactly in the center between this end point of this corner of our inner vector and this corner here on our outer vector. We can accomplish this by creating some construction geometry and taking advantage of the snapping options that are available to us. So to do this, simply deselect in the white space and then come to the draw polyline tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to snap from this corner to this corner here. When we've finished with drawing that line, simply hit spacebar on the keyboard and that will just complete that line and still keep us in the draw polyline tool and then we'll come to this corner here and then draw one to the outside of this one here when we're finished just press the right mouse button to then exit that and accept the changes we're now going to take advantage of more snapping options by coming to the draw circle tool and I know that I want to create a diameter for our drill holes of an eighth of an inch, so 0 0.125. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to snap to the center of the lines that we've just drawn. So simply with your mouse pointer, just come over and hover around the center point, and you'll see that the cursor will change. And when you when you do have the symbol that you can see on screen at the moment, simply click the left mouse button, and that will then draw your circles. And once you have both of them done click close on the form and then carefully select the lines that we did draw one by one and press delete. As promised the next tool we're going to be using is the mirror selected objects tool. We're going to use this to mirror the two drill holes that we've just created across the job center to the opposing sides of our nameplate. So let's start by selecting the drill hole and then holding shift and then selecting the second drill hole and then select mirror selected objects we want to make sure that flip about job center is ticked and we also want to make sure that create a mirror copied is ticked and the next thing we want to do is we want to press the button to flip horizontal and as we can see that's done that perfectly so we can now click close on the form so it's time now to start thinking about adding some text to our nameplate. So to do this, we go to the draw text icon, which is found under create vectors, and just click that. We can start typing our text, so I'm going to type in rocket there, all in capitals. And next I want to choose a font. So all the true type fonts that are listed on Windows or on your system are all going to appear under here, under the drop down arrow and we can use the arrows to scroll up and down here or we can even drag the box here to go all the way through them but I know that I want to choose the Arial font so a nice thing that we can do here is we can actually start to type the name of the font if we know what we want to choose so I'm going to put, just start typing A R I and there you go we've now selected the Arial font so I can hit enter on the keyboard and then proceed with the other options so I want to have our text bold, I want to centre align our text, 
want to specify a height of 1.2 inches and next we can just click apply. Now you'll notice that the text has somewhat disappeared uh, beyond our work area. So what I can do is I can just set the anchor point of our text to be x say 3. We can just try that and hit apply. It's not all the way in so we can just maybe put x6 and then hit apply. And now that we can see our text we just want to take a moment just to make sure that the text is exactly how we want it to be. When we're happy with that we just simply click close. And while our text is still selected we may want to think about centering the text to the centre of our work area. So we can do that by using the Align Selected Objects tool or we can do that by using the shortcut F9 on the keyboard. Like so. The next thing I want to do to our text is to add a curve and also to edit the spacing between the characters. This is often known as kerning. We can do this with the text still selected by going to the Edit Text Spacing and Curve option. We'll just select that and you'll notice that we'll be presented with two green nodes and one centre white node. The top green node will allow us to adjust our curve upwards and the bottom green node will allow us to adjust the curve downwards and the centre white node will allow us to manoeuvre our text around the screen. As we want to create an upwards curve of our text simply drag the cursor and just try to match the curve so it matches the flow of the curve of our border on our nameplate. And once we've done that, we can then move on to editing the spacing. To do this, simply come between any of the two characters you can see on screen. You'll notice that your mouse pointer will change to the one that I have on screen now. A simple click in between any of the characters will close up the spaces. However, in this situation, we actually want to increase the spacing between the characters. So to do this, hold shift on the keyboard and then click again. So just increase the spaces back to where we were and then add extra clicks just to push the letters out a little bit. And once we're happy with the spacing between all the characters we can come out of that mode by pressing escape on the keyboard and the next thing I'm going to do is just to highlight the text again. I'm just going to jog that down a little by using the arrows in the keyboard until I think that it's roughly in between the two lines. So about there. The one thing that can look a little odd here is the spacing between the R and the edge of our nameplate and the T and the edge of our nameplate, mainly down to the shape of the T and that gives a lot more space over here so it can look a little uneven. So what we can do is we can come over to the edit text spacing and curve option again and we can simply just hover over the red node here and this will allow us to drag our text around the curve that it's currently on. And we can just move the T over a little more just to make it look a bit more evenly spaced between the R and the edge and the T and the edge. So roughly about there. And again we can either come to the selection mode arrow once we're happy or press escape on the keyboard. So that now completes our vector design for this particular tutorial. So what we can do is we can come to file and save as and we can just give that a name so rocket nameplate and I'm just going to put underscore vectors and we can then use this with the companion toolpathing tutorial. Don't worry if you don't have the vectors like we do have on screen you can either spend a few more minutes just perfecting the techniques that we've learned in this tutorial or you can use our pre-prepared file which you'll find alongside our tutorial.